Canto 1, Chapter 1, Purports, Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, Sri, Sri Vyasadeva at once worships the Para, Paratattva, Sri Krishna, whose transcendental, transcendental activities are described in the 10th canto. Unscrupulous persons go immediately to the 10th canto and especially to the five chapters which describe the Lord's Rasa dance. This portion of the Srimad Bhagavatam is the most confidential part of this great literature. Unless one is thoroughly accomplished in the transcendental knowledge of the Lord, one is sure to misunderstand the Lord's worshipable transcendental pastimes called the Rasa dance and his love affair with the gopis. The subject matter is highly spiritual and only the liberated persons who have gradually attained the stage of Paramahamsa can trans transcendentally relish this Rasa dance. Srila Vyasadeva therefore gives the reader the chance to gradually develop spiritual realization before actually relishing the essence of the pastimes of the Lord. Therefore, he pur purposely invokes a Gayatri Mantra, Dimahi. This Gayatri Mantra is meant for spiritually advanced people. When one is successful in chanting a Gayatri Mantra, he can enter into the transcendental position of the Lord. One must therefore acquire Brahminical qualities or, perfect, or be perfectly situated in the quality of goodness in order to chant the Gayatri Mantra successfully, and then attain this to the stage of transcendentally realizing the Lord, his name, his fame, his qualities, and so on. Shrimad Bhagavatam is a narration of the Swarup of the Lord manifested by his internal potency. And this potency, potency is distinguished from the external potency which, is manifested, which has manifested the cosmic world, which is within our experience. Srila Vyasadeva makes a clear distinction between the two in this shloka. Sri Vyasadeva says herein that the manifested internal potency is real, real, whereas the external manifested energy in the form of material existence is only temporary and illusory, like the mirage in the desert. In the desert mirage, there is no actual water. There is only the appearance of water. Real water is somewhere else. The manifested cosmic creation appears as reality, but reality of which this is but a shadow is in the spiritual world. Absolute truth is in the spiritual sky, not the material sky. In the material sky, everything is relative truth. That is to say, one truth depends on something else. This cosmic creation results from, in, from interaction of the three modes of nature. And the temporary manifestations are so created as to present an illusion of reality to the bewildered mind of the conditioned soul, who appears in so many species of life, including the dem higher demigods like Brahma, Indra, Chandra, and so on. In actuality, there is no reality in the, in the manifested world. There appears to be reality, however, because of, the true real, because of the true reality which exists in the spiritual world, where the personality of Godhead eternally exists with his transcendental paraphernalia. The chief engineer of complicated construction does not personally take part in the construction, but he knows every nook and corner, because everything is done under his direction. He knows everything about the construction, both directly and indirectly. Similarly, the, the personality of Godhead, who is the supreme engineer of this cosmic creation, knows every nook and corner, although affairs are being carried out by demigods. Beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant ant, no one is independent in the material creation. The hand of the Lord is seen everywhere. All material elements as well as all spiritual sparks emanate from him only. And whatever is created in this material world is but the interaction of two energies, the material and the spiritual, which emanate from the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. The chemist can manufacture water in the, chem in the chemical laboratory by mixing hydrogen and oxygen, but in reality, the living entity works in the laboratory under the direction of the Supreme Lord. And the materials with which he works are also supplied by the Lord. The Lord knows everything directly and indirectly, and he is co cognizant, cognizant of all minute details, and he is fully independent. He is compared to a mine of gold, and the cosmic creation in so many different forms are compared to objects made from the gold, such as gold rings, necklaces, and so on. The gold ring and gold necklace are qualitatively one with the gold in the mind, but quantitatively the gold in the mind is different. Therefore, the absolute truth is simultaneously one and different. Nothing is absolutely equal with the absolute truth, but at the same time, nothing is independent of the absolute truth. Conditioned souls, beginning from Brahma, who, who engineers the entire universe, down to the insignificant ant, are all creating, but none of them are independent of the Supreme Lord. The materialist wrongly thinks that he that there is no creator other than his own self. This is called Maya or illusion. Because of poor fund of knowledge, the materialist cannot see beyond the purview of his imperfect senses, and thus he thinks that matter automatically takes its own shape without the aid of superior intelligence. This is refuted in the shloka by Sri Srila Vyasadeva. Since the complete whole or the absolute truth is the source of everything, nothing can be independent of the body of the absolute truth. Whatever happens to the body quickly becomes known to the embodied. Similarly, the creation is is the body of the absolute whole. Therefore, the absolute knows everything directly and indirectly that happens in the creation. 
In the Shruti Mantra, it is also stated that the Absolute Whole of Brahman is the ultimate source of everything. Everything emanates from Him, and everything is maintained by Him, and at the end, everything enters into Him. That is the law of nature. In the Smriti Mantra, the same is confirmed. It is said that the source from which everything emanates at the beginning of Brahma's millennium, and the reservoir to which everything ultimately enters, is the Absolute Truth of Brahman. Material scientists take it for granted that the ultimate source of the planetary system is the Sun. But they but they are una unable to explain the source of the sun. Hare Krishna, to be continued.